you. Danny and Michael, congratulations on the film. I absolutely loved it. Hey! Yeah, so good. I can't wait for audiences to see it. The the opening scene elicited such an immediate reaction out of me. I was like, right, we're, we're going on a ride here. <laughs> and of course you did it with one single continuous shot. I'm such a sucker for single take cinema. I mean, everyone's talking about Extraction 2 and how crazy their one is in their movie. But I mean, you had to navigate the world of a teenage house party. The, nothing this, scarier. Nothing <laughs> scarier. Now, this is your directorial debut and taking on like a technical feat like that is no mean feat. Was that always the intention to open your movie in one single take and hook, hook us in? Yeah, well, the actual scene came like four drafts into the movie. Uh, uh, but like once I had written it, I knew I wanted it one take. Like one take, like being pulled into the world of these characters and, and the horror of the hand. Like and, I just, yeah. and, and having every corner reveal something new, like with the camera, that was a, a, an idea that, yeah, that we had. And, you know, it was the very last thing that we shot. It was the last shot of the last day of the shoot. We we're going to do it wow. first up, but yeah. it was still COVID. So it was like, you were allowed to have that many people there, but you know the amount of COVID or whatever that could have spread was like, let's do it at the end. <laughs> do it at the end, and then it's no longer a problem. Yeah, then mask it's like, mask off. yeah, we, we can uh, quarantine, you know, yeah, after yeah. that. But yeah. it was like we, yeah, we had so many people rock up to the party, to like in these double decker buses. We we're like, wow, we really went hard with trying to get people to come in. There was a lot of people there. Our awesome extras coordinator got so many people, and we kept doing call outs on Instagram. Like, who's free? Someone come, please, please. So everyone there really wanted to be there. And there was like, people sneaking in as well, like people that had a real so, party. Yeah, yeah. So it was literally like a real party. And then yeah. when we did rap at 4.30 in the morning, that fake party became a real one because, you know, we got the shot and everyone just started, oh. yeah, we all like started partying. Yeah. And what also another cool thing about that opening shot is that we hid all the main actors in that opening scene. So they're there in different costumes and characters so you can spot them. Where's Sophie's Wally? there, Jade's there, Riley's there. James is there, Otis is there, like everyone's hidden in the frame. I mean, rewatch value for this movie is high, but yeah, you've given me a task in the <laughs> opening shot to uh, lean into that. I'm in it too. You are. <laughs> That's one of the most important I, 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 I did my thing, and then as soon as the camera went past, I brought and grabbed the monitor and yeah. make sure everything else is And make sure you made the actual cut. Yeah, well. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's really important. Yeah. You don't Everyone want to be pause. on the cover. Let me just see this. <laughs> the again. I'm loving the direction of where the horror genre is headed because we have intelligent, compelling storytelling like your film, but at the same time, it still scares the living daylights out of you, that secret sort of ingredient, right? What do you love about the horror genre that you were like, yes, we're gonna make a horror film for our debut f debut movie? I was just always, as a kid, being obsessed with the genre, and it's like a rite of passage is watching something you're not meant to watch, and that <laughs> scars you and scares you to death. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I've always loved the genre. I think it's like a fun way to talk about heavy themes. Uh, and uh, there, there's just so many ways to tackle so many different things metaphorically and, and having those demons and monsters represent the dark parts of our society. I just am drawn to the genre. I find it so fun and exciting. Like, uh, there's nothing better than watching a horror film. Yeah, and then like the ones we like respect as well as the ones that don't just rely on like shock value or jump scares, the ones that are like genuinely unsettling without, you know, in between those moments, those are the movies that we liked and that's what we wanted to have a go at. And we wanted to have a go at having a movie that works both as a horror film, then also a drama film and have it work on both levels. So it was an interesting line to tread, but you know, that's what we're trying to do, have it work as both. Now, speaking of the, the heavy stuff, so talk to me, like leans really into grief and how that manifests in, in people in seeking unhealthy highs. And, and in this way, it's, a ritual to summon spirits. And the ceramic embalmed hand made from a severed arm of a psychic is so cooked and <laughs> terrifying. I'm just curious, was there a reverence to this hand on set? Like, was it showing up in on set selfies with the cast or was it like, it needs to be respected and revered and only when you call action was it to be sort of like, there and oh, the, they, they could play around with it, but okay. no, no many people wanted to. No, <laughs> I certainly don't. Yeah, like when we were at Sundance, we had two of the hands and we were like moving it around and like hiding it in different spots and everything. Having like, a whole toilet paper. Like we have it over there and... You don't. Oh my God, oh my God <laughs> that reaction. <laughs> you know the person was who molded real. it? The person who molded the first hand, right, and did all the writing on it, they yeah. quit the next day and we don't know why. <laughs> Gosh, what did you do? What did so the hand they do? What did that do? Is the question. Yeah. I, I, don't, if I knew that was here, I would <laughs> <laughs> see. This is the sort of reaction that you have with the audience. But just a little anecdote. My husband got 
a wax handmade at Madame Tussauds, and I hated that thing. It was, <laughs> it was just, it just annoyed me. I don't know why. I just would just get it away. Um, but it suffered a, a sad fate um, uh, where it melted. Um, oh, you in, melted in, it. in you storage. Did no, it. I didn't. I don't know. Why I didn't. No, I probably it manifested it. We don't know what happened to it. I don't know what happened. No, it was in his parents' garage in storage. We're in between places or whatever, and unfortunately, it didn't make it. Oh. Um, so. Uh, yeah, or fortunately, right? Yeah, or fortunately for me. <laughs> yeah. That's kind but of scary I'm... that it melted like that. Yeah. yeah, that's creepy. Oh, it wasn't scary. It was a relief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this thing was ugly. Um, he's got lovely hands, but not but in, how, not how in great, like even this hotel that we're recording this at, all the ha- doors have hands on them. Have, have you seen that, that? At, the, at, the, at the numbers that's of the doors? It's all be. hands. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's very it's theme theme based. It's hand driven. Hands are creepy. You belong. Your film belongs here. Yes. Yeah, that is creepy. You know, I, I was so deeply moved um, by Mia's desire to ke- connect with her mother. I lost my mother when I was six. And so, like, I, I went into this movie not expecting to feel all the feels, yeah. um, to be honest. What does this ritual offer Mia in this movie that she can't get anywhere else? I think she's very lonely mm. and actually lost someone that she could communicate with, like, properly. And she's losing Jade. So, like, the even, like, talk to me. Is like, yeah, talk to me. I'm lonely. I need someone to connect to. Like, mm. whoever you are, I, I need someone right now. And then I let you in. Like, I let you into my body. Whether you're, like, drugs, or alcohol, or sex. Like, I feel like I need something right now, even if you're bad for me. I think that it was just, like, um, someone that's very lonely and very sad and is looking for something to, to connect with. Yeah, I think it's not something that she needs. It's something that she thinks she needs. And yeah. it's something that she should be getting from her father and mm. outside that connection, that need for connection. And we see that film, like how close she is with her mother and having each part of, you know, every ounce of intimacy slowly stripped away from her. Mm. Um, and then like, her gravitating towards false connection. I want to talk about the Australiana in your film. Um, one thing that I just, I really enjoyed um, and also triggered me was hearing the Crazy Frog song. <laughs> like that was just, I, there's so many unexpected things about this movie, but I didn't think that was still a thing and you just threw it in there. Um, and, and also Riley... Uh, jamming out to see her in the car, which I have absolutely done uh, yeah. to Chandelier, that's for sure. Well, was that something you had to fight for to keep those as- Australiana elements in your movie? Well, say the rights for the Crazy Frog was like five different people own it, apparently. So it was a very complicated process to get the Crazy Frog. Five people own that yeah, song. Like, yeah, like, so, and they're all from different places. So I remember the supervi- music supervisor saying, do you need to use that song? <laughs> Does it have to be Crazy Frog? Um, but that was one that, you know, or Danny was really fighting for, you know, oh, I wasn't yeah, yeah. happy with the standard ringtone. There's like certain people I base certain characters on and then uh, the girl that I based Jade on a little bit, like she has that ringtone. And I'm like, that is so lame. Why do you have that? And like, I just liked incorporating that into, into Jade's character. And then CR was so awesome and collaborative that uh, we got it for a fraction of the price that normally would cost. Like she nice. was like looking after the South She's from she yeah. Adelaide as well. Yeah, oh, there you go. And like we love that song. Like, who doesn't? Yeah, jam out to the car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna swing. Like there's nothing better than a good car jam. Yeah, boys, I really love talking to you. I love the film. In wrapping up, one final question, bit of a basic one, but I I like to get this out of uh, who I talk to. Yeah. Is what three words would you use to describe "Talk to Me" that will hook someone in to go and see it? Surprisingly cheap. pretty decent. <laughs> cheap, weak, forgettable. <laughs> All right. That, that really draw them in. Put Re- that. Reprint the marketing material. That's, yeah. What, yeah, that's what we need. They'll be like, oh, I'll go see this. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right, thank you so much and great to talk to you. Thank you.